In this age of medicine stuff they're in, is there a trend towards adopting more laparoscopic surgery and are surgeons being trained, residents being trained to do that as well? And I think the short answer to that is yes, there is a trend towards doing things minimally invasive is what it's called. Maximally invasive is the large incision. Minimally invasive encompasses the entire um, uh, the entire colloquium of laparoscopic surgery and endoscopic surgery as well. And uh, for good reason, I think it's economically derived because we can do things laparoscopically or endoscopically. We can convert a large operation to a smaller one. The recovery is much faster and people can leave the uh, hospital a lot quicker. So there's an ultimate saving to the hospital and to society to do that. Um, now, the, the training for that, our training body, the ROC Resident Review Committee of the ACGME, sets out a certain number of cases that residents have to do in certain defined categories. And laparoscopy is one. A few years ago they added not just basic laparoscopy but advanced laparoscopic cases as well. So our residents have to graduate with a certain number of advanced laparoscopic cases in addition to basic. Right? It's on the order of 50 or 60 of those particular things. They've also changed the numbers for endoscopy so a lot of them have to do a, a fairly large number of endo endoscopies as well. And the reason is because we're seeing a lot more laparoscopy as well. And if, uh, if you're going to get a job at a hospital afterwards, one thing the hospital is going to hire you is going to ask you is, do you have endoscopic skills? Do you do these procedures endoscopically or not? And that for them is a simple reality of where medical care is going. We try and get people um, through an operation with the least invasive means possible. And then we turn around and try and get them out of the hospital as fast as they can as well. Robots are something we're starting to incorporate into laparoscopic surgery now. They have the benefit of allowing us to see things in 3D. So they have a 3D visualization system, which is very, very good for specific difficult operations. And I would use a robot in a so-called redo operation, where somebody had an operation before, I'm going back in to redo it again, because the tissue planes are very indistinct and you need all the help you can to try and figure out what you're looking at. And I think laparoscopic surgery is going to take up a major proportion of the way we approach surgery in the future. It may be supplanted by things such as robotic surgery, it may be supplanted by things such as micro laparoscopic surgery and everything, but I think there's always going to be a role for open surgery. There are certain procedures that uh, lend themselves to an open uh, operation and stuff. Uh, operations obviously on the skin and certain parts of abdominal contents, you can't really get in there with a laparoscope, so you're always going to have to have your own strains right there. But I think any place where there's a hollow viscous or organ, or there's a cavity in the body, that may lend itself very well to laparoscopic surgery. And I think we're just going to improve on the way we do things as well. Um, I don't think there's going to be any day when a computer is going to completely take over or a robot's going to completely take over what we do to human uh, bodies. And I think that's because of variability in all of us. It's definitely that as well. Uh, I tell my patients sometimes if everybody were a clone, we might be able to design a robot to do the exact same operation of them all the time. Obviously, everybody's different, so it's going to take a, the human touch to, to figure things out just a little bit different.